We're not a cold. major point here is <laughs> a major point here is that policy is very is clearly in restrictive territory. We don't know how restrictive, to be clear. So the 25 versus 50 as a first start, I think, shouldn't be a signal that we're now, you know, in in the off and running into easy money. The thing that I found also very interesting, it's a little bit more technical. If you look to the dot points on where they think they're going to end, there's really quite a wide dispersion there. So there's a lot of uncertainty about exactly where we are, but we know we are in restrictive, and you know, moving out of restrictive with one, you know, sharp move to make sure you're ahead of the game. Um, you know, I'd give them, you know, a little bit of a little bit of room here. I wouldn't say that we're going back to zero because we clearly aren't. Uh, then, I think they are, you know, they want to make sure that they are not behind the curve as they were starting off, I think, the last time. Equity valuations are believed to be roughly in line for a soft landing with 50%, saying they are overpriced, and 47%, saying they are underpriced. But 97% say they are significantly or somewhat overpriced for a recessionary outcome. I think, frankly, um, it's more the former, if I'm listening closely to what Jay Powell has to say, which is... Um, while they say the risks are balanced, I think you're, you're correct. And, you know, 50 strikes me as acting as though they put a little bit more weight on the uh, unemployment side of things. I do not think yet that they're in panic mode. So I don't think this was an emergency 50. But he said something else that was really important. It was a very strong start, and he very much was clear that, quote, he didn't want to fall behind. So I believe this one is a little bit more in the camp of, okay, we say the risks are balanced, but it's really the labor market that we're looking at. So far, so good. But let's, let's jump ahead of this. Um, and that's, that is, I think, the main issue here is about sort of recalibrating, what's to recalibrate so that they weren't, again, falling behind. Because they had fallen behind on the other side of this, as you recall, and had to really scramble to right. uh, get ahead of inflation. Headed by Powell. The FOMC will begin deliberations today, i.e. Tuesday, September 17th, for the sixth monetary policy meeting for 2024. Powell has expressed confidence in cutting interest rates for the current meeting, saying that inflation was near the U.S. Central Bank's 2% target. Basically. Well, no, let me be clear. I said, I, to be fair, in the reality, as vice chairman, unlikely I would have dissented. However, um, I think the minutes will show quite a lively discussion, as, as Chair Powell himself said. You know, I think, um, you know, recall also that there were a number of folks who had wanted to move at the last meeting. Um, so that may have been another group that he had to really think about in terms of had he not delivered what they wanted, he could have uh, had some dissents on the other side. If he had come in at 25, a few might have descended towards 50. Uh, but this was clearly um, a lively discussion. Not everyone believes the Fed has time. Powell's legacy is dependent on him nailing a soft landing after waiting too late to raise rate in 2021, said Diane Swank, chief economist at KPMG US. The window on that occurring is narrowing. And Neil Dutter of Renaissance Macro Research rejects the criticism that a half-point cut would spook markets, saying there are real risks if the Fed only goes a quarter point. Uh, I wasn't totally surprised. Remember the last time we talked about it, the market and others were saying this is 50-50. So, you know, not shocked, not totally surprised. What I did find interesting was the analysis that he gave for 50 basis points in terms of the economy basically being strong, you know, inflation still somewhat elevated. All of that analysis could have supported 25 basis points. So I think it was not economic analysis that drove 25 versus 50, but rather market, market expectations and internal committee dynamics. The survey shows 84% of the 27 respondents, including economists, fund managers and strategists, see the Fed cutting by a quarter percentage point, with 16% seeing a half-point decrease. That compares with 65% probability of a half-point cut now priced into Fed futures market. Right, and I think in the uh, press conference, Chair Powell really went out of his way to say the economy is strong, labor markets are strong, you know, phrases like growing, growing well, a variety of things to point out. Um, then why not leave confidence. it in the bank, Roger? Sorry to interrupt. Then why not? If, it, if all that's true, why not leave it in the bank in case you need it uh, at, at some point? Why, why do it now? Well, well, as I said, I think there was, uh, you know, a little sense that the risks are not fully balanced. In the last policy meeting, Powell led FOMC unanimously voted to keep the policy rate at the 23-year high of 5.25%-5.50%. The US central bank has maintained borrowing rates steady for 12 straight months to anchor in high inflation and consistently bring it down toward the 2% target range. 
Mm. Um, I think they learned from the last time that, you know, if you start late, you have to move really quickly, which is, is disconcerting. The other thing is I think the market, um, I'll, I'll use the word, gave them permission to go 50 this time. Um, you know, if you don't want to surprise the market, the market suddenly, for whatever reason, opens up the possibility of 50. You know, take it, put it in the bank now, uh, and, you know, have a really strong, good start. So, it was you just know, Personally, I, I'm with you. I thought the analysis would have suggested 25, but I'm not yeah. you know, stunned at 50. Overall, the probability of a soft landing stands at 53%, about where it's been since March, while the chance of a recession has ticked up to 36%, five points above its recent low in June, but well below the 50% level that prevailed for much of 2022 and 2023. The outlook for growth remained at 2% for this year and ticked down to 1.7% for 2025, two-tenths below the July survey, but still at or around economic potential and not a recession. The survey stands on one side of a debate that has divided markets in the past several days over whether the Fed cuts 25 or 50 basis points, creating an unusual amount of uncertainty for a Fed that has telegraphed its move at almost every meeting. One basis point equals 0.01%. With considerable uncertainty about what the Federal Reserve will do at its meeting this week, Respondents to the CNBC Fed survey are forecasting a more gradual approach to rate cuts than is currently priced into markets. The differences grow over time with survey respondents forecasting a year-end funds rate of 4.6% and 3.7% by the end of 2025, compared with 4.1% and 2.8% and 2.8% in the futures market. CNBC Fed survey. We believe that the equivalent of eight cuts in six meetings is more than what will happen John Donaldson, director of fixed income at the Haverford Trust Company, wrote in response to the survey. That forecast is more in line with a hard landing than a soft landing. Barry Knapp from Ironside's Macroeconomics says, we suspect the FOMAC will either under-promise or under-deliver, perhaps both. Soft landing expected. The major difference could be that survey respondents appear less worried about the economy overall than futures markets, and more convinced the Fed has time to enact gradual rate cuts. 74% said the September rate cut comes in time to preserve a soft landing, with just 15% saying it's too late. CNBC Fed survey. The economy is growing faster than expected in 2024, and the Fed has time to lower rates at a measured pace, said Michael England of Action Economics. While there are economic risks on the horizon, the coming Fed cuts will be much closer to a mid-cycle correction trend, a la 1,995, 1997 and 2019, than to an end-of-cycle recessionary trend, wrote Guy Liebers, chief fixed income strategist, Janny Montgomery Scott. Forecasts for the unemployment rate did tick modestly higher, compared with the current rate of 4.2%, unemployment is seen at 4.4% and 4% and 4.5% for this year and next, both about two-tenths higher than the prior survey. The SP500 has seen the gains for the year, according to the average forecast, with the index falling to 5,546 by year-end, a little more than 1% below the current level. The average forecast puts the SP at 5,806 by the end of next year. Also read us Fed policy decision in focus, did Powell-led Fomang C wait too long to cut interest rates? Here's what experts say. The time has come for policy to adjust Powell said in his keynote speech at the Fed's annual economic conference in Jackson Hole, Wyoming. The direction of travel is clear and the timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data, the evolving outlook and the balance of risks. D Street experts said the main concern for policymakers has been the labour market, which is more likely to drive policy discussions and decisions in the months ahead. They will also have more data to consider leading up to their November and December meetings. Some analysts also noted that a quarter point cut might provide a temporary boost. Still, it is unlikely to have the sustained impact to counteract the US economy's multiple challenges. As the two-day crucial meeting of the world's most powerful central bank, US Federal Reserve begins tonight, rate cuts are no more a debate of when, but how much. The biggest question on the minds of investors right now is whether Jerome Powell will, will opt for a rare and bold 50 basis point cut to thwart recession or stick to a 25 BPS cut in its pursuit of a soft landing for the US economy. Calls for an outsized rate cut are growing louder with 60% Wall Street traders predicting a 50 BPS cut, according to CME FedWatch tool. By the end 2024, markets are expecting a total reduction of at least 100 basis points in the first. Signals in Powell's Jackson Hole speech. While the speech given by Powell at the symposium last month made it all but certain that the American Central Bank would cut rates, the lack of any guidance at that time was perhaps indicative of the Fed chief wanting to keep his options open. The other factor in the Fed's dual mandate 
alongside keeping prices stable the objective of ensuring maximum employment was also being tracked closely. Powell indicated at the symposium that his worries were now tilting towards that side. The Fed has kept its key lending rate at a two-decade high of 5.3% since July last year, holding off on cuts that other central banks, such as the ECB, had already commenced months ago. Of advertisement. It needs to be noted that the US has seen a recession or a significant cooling of economic activity after almost every time the Fed has hiked interest rates in a sustained manner to control inflation. This time could be different A soft landing sustained high levels of inflation being brought down without setting off a recession looks highly possible. In his Jackson Hole speech, Powell took note of the sharp slowdown in the American job market and said that the Fed did not seek or welcome further cooling. He also shrugged off concerns about another recession in the near future, arguing that the rise in unemployment was consistent with a slowdown in hiring, not a sudden spike in job cuts. There is good reason to think that the economy will get back to 2% inflation while maintaining a strong labour market, he said. Impact of Fed rate cut on India and elsewhere. Like other central banks, such as the Reserve Bank of India RBI, the US Fed influences employment and inflation primarily by using monetary policy tools to control the availability and cost of credit in the economy. The Fed's primary tool of monetary policy is the federal funds rate, changes in which influence other interest rates which in turn influence borrowing costs for households and businesses, as well as broader financial conditions. When interest rates go down in an economy, it becomes cheaper to borrow so households are more inclined to buy more goods and services, and businesses have an incentive to borrow funds to expand operations, buy equipment, or to invest in new projects. Also read US Fed leaves rates unchanged what this means for Indian investors. Improved demand for goods and services ends up pushing up wages and helps rekindle the growth cycle. Even though the linkages of monetary policy to inflation and employment are not direct or immediate, monetary policy is a key factor in curbing runaway prices or stoking the growth impetus. Around half of the sample of 18 emerging markets tracked by Reuters have already started cutting rates in this cycle, front-running the Fed, with easing efforts concentrated in Latin America and emerging Europe. But volatility and uncertainty around the US. Presidential election clouds the outlook. The US. Election will have a major bearing on this because, depending on various fiscal policies, it really complicates the cutting cycle, said Trang Ngien, global head of M Credit Strategy at BNP Paribas. We could see more idiosyncratic actions among central banks on the back of that. Strong dollar reprieve. Those economies hoping US. Rate cuts will weaken the robust dollar further, lifting their currencies, may be disappointed. JP Morgan notes the dollar has strengthened after a first Fed cut in three out of the last four cycles. The dollar outlook will be driven largely by where US. Rates are relative to others. The safe haven yen and Swiss franc could see their respective discounts to US. Rates almost halved by end 2025, Reuters polls suggest, while sterling and the Australian dollar may only acquire a marginal yield advantage over the dollar. Unless the dollar becomes a real low yielder, it will continue to hold its appeal among non us Investors, Asian economies, meanwhile, have led markets front-running of US. Cuts with South Korea's one, the Thai baht and Malaysian ringgit surging through July and August. China's yuan has wiped out year-to-date losses versus the greenback. A global equity rally, which faltered recently on growth fears, could resume if lower US. Rates boost economic activity and means recession is avoided. World stocks tumbled in early August following weak US. Jobs data. You always have a wobbly market around the first cut because the market wonders why central banks are cutting said Barclays head of European equity strategy Emmanuel Call. If you have a cut without a recession, which is the mid-cycle script, usually the markets tend to go back up Call said, adding that the bank favoured sectors benefiting from lower rates such as real estate and utilities. A US. Soft landing should also play well in Asia, although the Nikkei has fallen more than 10% from July's record high on a rising yen and as Japan's rates rise. He longed for moment is almost here. For two and a half years, ever since America's Federal Reserve embarked on its fastest series of interest rate rises since the 1980s, investors have been desperate for any hint of when it would reverse course. Now it would be a huge surprise if Jerome Powell, the central bank's chair, did not announce the first such reduction after its rate-setting committee meets on September 18th. 
Indeed, among traders the debate is no longer whether but how much. Market pricing implies roughly a 40% chance that officials will cut their policy rate, currently between 5.25% and 5.5%, by 0.25 percentage points, and a 60% chance that they will instead opt for 0.5. The Federal Reserve's benchmark, short-term rate has held a 23-year high of 5.25% to 5.5% since July 2023. This pause follows aggressive rate hikes dating back to March 2022, a period in which the central bank raised rates 11 times. The goal, at that time, was to make borrowing more expensive to cool down the economy and surging inflation. After raising its key interest rate for nearly two years to tamp down growth and rising prices, economists expected the Fed to cut the rate to bring it more in line with slowing inflation. However, Estimates have been scaled back with most rate cut predictions shifting to two, one or none after inflation accelerated early this year. But is a rate cut incoming? Following July's meeting, Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell said, the economy is moving closer to the point where it will be appropriate to reduce our policy rate. That time is drawing near. That time could be in September if the data support that. Usday kept bets the Federal Reserve will start an expected series of interest rate cuts with a half percentage point move downward on Wednesday, an expectation that may itself put pressure on central bankers to deliver just that.